There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the past HSC exam question video. In this video, I'm going to cover the past HSC multiple choice questions from the nuclear chemistry chapter. Overall, there will be seven questions in this video that are covered. Well, I'll do once I start, which I'll start in a second. I'll give you guys five seconds to pause the video after I've read the question. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, just press play and I'll go over the answer itself. So I'll read the actual first question. It says, which of the following is a transgenic element? A. Cesium. B. Carium. C. Chromium. D. Curium. So for this question, I give you a tip. You should be using your periodic table. In the actual exam, you'll also be given a periodic table. So have a look at the periodic table and see if you can figure out which one is the transgenic element. I'll give you five seconds to pause the video. I'm back. The correct answer was curium. I'll go over why as well. So we have here our periodic table. Now you have to look at the actual atomic number and see if it's less than 90, more than 93, that's a transgenic element. So we have curium, which is 96, so that's a transgenic element. We're also given carium, which is 58, that's not a transgenic element. We've got cesium, which is um, 55, also not a transgenic element. And chromium, which is 24, also not a transgenic element. So if you, all these ones were given, only curium had a atomic number of greater than 92, which has to be the case for it to be a transgenic element. So curium was a transgenic element, whereas the other ones were not. Next question is, which of the following is used to detect radiation from radioactive isotopes? A, pH meter, B, Geiger counter, C, ion selective electrode, or D, atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Can I give you five seconds to try to answer the question? And then when you're ready, just press play. I'm back. The correct answer for this one is the Geiger counter. And the pH meter is wrong because the pH meter obviously measures pH, not radiation. Ion selective electrode, if you didn't know what that was, the name electrode gives it away. Electrode has something to do with electrochemistry. So it's to do with measuring voltage. That's also wrong. And the atomic absorption spectrometer is used to detect chemicals in samples, not to do with radiation. So D is also wrong. So the correct one was B, Gaia counter. And that was video number two that covers um, types of instruments that help detect radiation. So next question is this one. Which of the following conditions will produce a radioactive isotope? A, too many atoms in the sample provided. B, too many protons and neutrons in the atom. C, too many electrons in the outer shell of the atom. Or D, too many electrons for the number of neutrons in the atom. So we're going to give you five seconds to pause the video. Right. In this case, the correct answer is B. The reason why is because if anything which has the atomic number of greater than 83 is a radioisotope. So anything greater than 83 is a radioisotope. And the way we can determine this is the, the actual atomic number is to do with protons. Anything that has too many protons in it, more than 83, is definitely a radioisotope. So too many protons, neutrons in the atom makes it a radioisotope. Now when it comes to the other ones, too many atoms in the sample provided, that's nothing. I mean, that's just general. It has nothing to do with radioactivity. Too many electrons in the outer shell of the atom also has nothing to do with, electri uh, with radioactivity. And too many electrons for the number of neutrons in the atom that is, um, again, nothing to do with radioactivity. So the correct answer is B. Next question is, which set contains only stable nuclei? A, 2 hydrogen, 12 carbon, and 2 and 38 uranium. B, 16 oxygen, 39 potassium, 12 carbon. C, 65 is supposed to be cobalt. 
you 65 cobalt 18 oxygen 24 magnesium D 14 carbon 16 oxygen and 1 hydrogen in 5 seconds Right, so the correct answer is B. The reason why B is correct is because the other ones, if you have a look at the other ones, um, here we have uranium. Uranium is most definitely a radioisotope, so it's not stable because it has atomic number of 92, that's greater than 83. We have, here we've got um, oxygen 18.8, so that's ratio-wise, it's more than 1 to 1, quite a bit more than 1 to 1, even though it has atomic number of less than 20. So this is also a radioisotope. Here we've got 14 carbons. So again, the ratio is more than 1 to 1, even though it has an atomic number of less than 20. So this is a radioisotope. So each of these, we have at least one, which is a radioisotope. And if you have a look at the other one, 16, 8, that's a ratio 1 to 1, that's good. 12, 6, that's a ratio 1 to 1, that's good. And 19, 39, even though that's a tiny bit over 1 to 1, it's still more or less 1 to 1, so that's also good. So B is correct because in this case they're all stable. Their atomic ratio of neutrons to protons is all one to one. Mm. Next is which of the following radiations is measured with a Geiger counter? A, beta, B, infrared, C, microwave, D, ultraviolet. I'll give you five seconds to pause the video. I'm back. All right, so in this case, the correct answer is beta. And if you were confused, you didn't know exactly what they measured. I mean, Geiger counter measures both beta and gamma, but beta is the only type of radiation. The other ones aren't really radiation. I mean, you've got off infrared, microwave, and ultraviolet. The only real radiation that we've covered in the nuclear chemistry chapter is alpha, beta, and gamma. So this gives you a beta, so you can assume this one's correct, which is also true because the other ones are all incorrect. So beta is correct. Next question is, which of the following is an important factor in predicting the nuclear stability of an isotope? A, the atomic radius, B, the nuclear radius, C, the ratio of neutrons to protons, D, the ratio of electrons to protons. I'll give you five seconds. Right, so the actual correct answer is C. And the reason why C is correct, the ratio of neutrons to protons, that's the whole, it has to have one to one ratio for anything which has a atomic number of less than 20. One to five, one to 1.5 ratio for anything above 20 and less than 84. And so this is a ratio that's really important. Anything below this or above this is in a radioisotope. The other ones, like for example, D is definitely completely incorrect. The ratio of electrons to protons has nothing to do with um, radioisotopes. Nuclear radius, that's how big the, the radius is. This could be because obviously it has something to do with how many protons and neutrons it is. Some are related, but not that much, especially not compared to C. Atomic radius is also not, not as much related to predicting nuclear stability compared to C. C is the obvious one, so C is correct. Next one is... Which of the following is an example of a transuranic element? Carbon-14, cobalt-60, C is uranium-238, D is curium-249. Can I give you five seconds? I'm back and the correct answer is curium. And the reason why is again anything that is a transuranic element has to have the atomic number of greater than, so more than 92. So cobalt, four, uh, carbon 14, that's really, I mean, you don't have to check that up. Carbon has definitely doesn't have the carbon. 14 definitely has, doesn't have the atomic number of 92 or greater. Cobalt 60 also doesn't have it. You can check it up, but it won't have it. So the only two we're left are these, U238 and, and curium 249. And U is actually uranium. So uranium is the last element with the atomic number of 92 that is not transuranic. Anything that is a transuranic element has to have the number greater than 92. In this case, curium has 96. So curium is the example 
over the transferring element. And these kind of questions test your skills of using the periodic table. So make sure to know how to use the periodic table quite effectively because you will get some questions like that in your exam as well. So I hope that was overall useful. Thank you for watching.